Uh, good morning, everyone. I'll be presenting in, uh, for M4, and my topic is the next step. Okay. Uh, so, presenting Mrs. S, a 44 year housewife who presented with history of menorrhagia, oral mucosal beads, and with the ecchymosis, was evaluated outside and was diagnosed to have ITP 10 years back. She was on steroids since then, tapering doses. She also had history of three, two intrauterine deaths after in second and third trimesters. And uh, three months back, while she was on tapering dose of steroids, she developed sudden severe headache and was found to have spontaneous STH and underwent bar hole drainage for the same. Platelet count at that time was less than 10,000. Subsequently, she had good improvement in platelet count after being given rituximab. She was also on Altrombopag and Cerulimus that time. Now she came to CMC for further management. Uh, on, uh, while traveling to CMC, she developed low-grade fever for three days, which was intermittent, not associated with chills and rigors. She also developed insidious onset breathlessness, which is not associated with orthopnea, PND, chest pain, and palpitations. She also noticed a right lower limb swelling at that time. And on examination, she was tachypnic, tachycardic, and requiring oxygen uh, to maintain. Uh, oxygen. She also had bilateral coarse crepitations present in the infrascapular region. And on examination, she has right uh, lower limb uh, swelling till uh, extending till the thighs. So a clinical syndrome is an immunocompromised host uh, on steroids with a uh, known case of ITP with a recent HDH has now come with short febrile illness in acute respiratory distress with right lower limb swelling. And uh, we, the, the probable diagnosis we considered at that point was viral pneumonia with the DVT and pulmonary embolism. So what would you think the next step in management for this patient would be? Um, so since we have considered DVT, we have uh, gone ahead with Doppler and the Doppler shows significant uh, uh, thrombosis present. So because of that, we have started her on low molecular weight heparin. And we have also discussed with hematology and uh, neurosurgery for the same, because she's a known case of uh, SDH, which was recently resolved, there is a risk of rebeading. So we have stopped the anticoagulation and we have put an IVC filter. She was uh, eva then evaluated for the cause of ITP and concurrent DVT. And with the prior history of two abortions, an APS was considered. So APLA workup was sent, which shows positive IgG, B2 uh, glycoprotein, and anticardiolipin. Lupus anticoagulatum was awaited. And during in the ward, she was asymptomatic for two days, after which she developed chest pain noted to have tachycardia. She was tachypnic and maintaining a saturation of 88% of on room air. Chest was, however, clear. Cardiac enzyme scent were normal. ECG has no significant changes. Now, this is her uh, uh, heart rate monitored in the ward. So, you can notice that on the second, her heart rate has been increasing steadily from the first night. So, that's why we thought it could be probably acute pulmonary embolism in spite of she having an IVC. So, we have gone ahead and done a CTPA, which shows significant, uh, uh, which shows acute PE changes. So now it's a patient whose ITP has DVT. So we put uh, with an SDH, which was resolved, has now developed an acute PE post IVC filter. So we have no other option but to start her again on low molecular weight heparin. And we started overlapping with warfarin and IVC was removed. Now, uh, so we already, we know that uh, ITP is predominantly a bleeding disorder, whereas APLA is predominantly a uh, prothrombotic state. So how can these two uh, correlate in a single patient? How can the patient have bleeding as well as thrombosis? So various studies have been done for the same. And uh, it was first demonstrated by Harris, in, uh, which shows that 30% of people with ITP have APLA positivity. So the exact mechanism is not known, but in the same study, the probable mechanism was described that in, in case of platelets, 
the RNA and phospholipids are usually on the inner membrane. And when, uh, in case of ITP, where the antibodies are produced against the platelets and uh, destroy the platelets, these inner membranes are exposed, producing platelet microparticles. And thus, the antibodies are thus produced against the inner phospholipids. So, having an uh, antiphospholipid antibodies present. So, uh, various studies have been done regarding the same. Um, so the study done here shows that uh, that in uh, patients with uh, 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 APLA with ITP should we I mean patients with ITP we should definitely check for uh, anti phospholipid antibodies especially lupus anticoagulants because they have a high risk of developing APS and in case if it is positive prophylactic drug regimen should be uh, started in order to prevent complications like DVT acute pulmonary embolism or MI. So it's a similar study done, which shows that the risk of thrombosis in case of an ITP is around 13.5%. And use of any um, uh, use of drugs like uh, immunosuppressions like azathioprine, cyclophosphamide, cyclosporin will increase the rate of thrombosis. But um, uh, studies have shown that use of rituximab has a beneficial effect. On the, so even in our patient, the rituximab has increased her platelet counts uh, drastically. Now, this is a study uh, done by Ames in North India. And here they show the incidence of patients with IP, I, ITP having APLA. And the incidence is around 12%. In uh, Western countries, it's around 14 to 75%, though it is comparatively less compared to the Western con uh, countries, but it is still a significant um, uh, number of people of ITP having APLA. So the learning points from this uh, study is that uh, at least one patient out of four are APLA positive in patients with ITP. So whenever a patient comes with chronic ITP to do an APLA workup and start on prophylactic agents to prevent uh, DVT and uh, other thrombotic phenomena. Any so what were the platelet counts when the patient came to our hospital? So when she came to our hospital, the platelet count was 3 lakhs. That is post giving rituximab. Outside? Outside. So what is the interval between this SDH and the when the patient came with the so AR? She had SDH in the month of September. This September is this year. That is the reason why you were skeptical about yeah, stopping. Stopping. Antibody. Any other question? Yes, we have thought of it. We have done a CTPA at that time, which was negative. At the time in the ED, we have done a CTPA, which was negative.